Well, we're late into the evening here at Shelburne Park. We're after watching the quarterfinal draw of the Boyle Sports Irish Graham Derby. And now we're down to the final 24. Eight wonderful heats here tonight at Shelburne and eight wonderful heat winners. I'm normally joined at this point in proceedings by the child, but the child is expecting child. Indeed, by the time he gets to watch this, he could have another member in his family. So I'm joined by a bit of glamour. Sarah Kinsler, Boyle Sports. Sarah, I only spoke to you on Monday. We went through the eight heats coming forward, looking ahead to tonight, it certainly didn't disappoint. It didn't disappoint. I mean, the only probably di one I was disappointed with was Clona Duke, really. I would have liked to have seen him get through, but what a night for the bitches. Bobsleigh Dream, Droopy's got it, Bocco's Crystal. Considering that she had been out of season, the way that she is running to the fitness that Graham Holland has gotten her back to and she's only going to get stronger. I, I can't wait to see what she's going to do next week. But a brilliant night of results. I spoke to Damien Lonigan earlier on. He said that Kulavani Hoffa will stay favourite for obvious reasons because he is obviously the big anti-post favourite and he's a massive loser for us in the red figures. So despite him being beaten tonight, he has to stay favourite. He won't change too much based on his draw um, for the quarterfinals. I think he'll be around 11-4. to 4. He won't change too much. But the likes of your Scagliettis, your Droopy's Bro, your Deladi Da, if they had gotten trap one or two, I would have seen them slashed a lot more. But I don't think they're going to. I don't think you're going to see a, a, a bigger price as if they had gotten a better draw. So sorry to those connections that were hoping for the inside draw. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it's four tremendous races to look forward to. Let's let's do a look back. Let's go through the heats one by one as we always do. Myself and the child uh, tonight is myself and. <laughs> I don't know what to call you. Sarah, how about that? Uh, the <laughs> opening heat, the opening heat, Bobsleigh Dream, so, so powerful. It was seen as a two-dog battle on the inside between herself and Sober Glory. Sober Glory missed the kick somewhat, was forced to check in the corner. She slipped around second. Tommy Sewick again showing terrific early speed. This fellow has developed uh, uh, two or three gears early that didn't seem to have in the early stages of his mm. career. He's absolutely flying, 17.03 to the third bend, but the writing was on the wall from early once Bobsleigh Dream turned second. There was no stopping her. She came through to land the spoils. Um, and music glide away ran on very fast. But Bobsleigh Dream is the one to take out of this. Yeah, she is. And you had asked me Monday because I was very undecisive on my anti-post pick. And you said, right, pick one. And I, I picked her. I didn't expect her to run as well as she did. But it's maybe just the way the race mapped out. Because she nearly is better having something to chase down. Um, we've seen her. She can do it from the front. I spoke to Pat Buckley after. He said to me, she can do it from the front. She can do it from behind. She's versatile. She's consistent. She's reliable. And that's the, the key with her. No matter what is in front of her, you nearly know she's going to be able to chase them down. I thought Tommy Zewick ran an unbelievable race. He needed to do that tonight, though, to qualify because I don't think he would have come from behind some of these. So I'm delighted to see him ping out. I think that's the, one of the best breaks. I mean, the fastest sectional to the third bend in this derby is 17.01, and he's doing a 17.03. Like, that's unbelievable from him. It's a huge performance, um, but nothing to take away from Bobsleigh Dream. Again, she's just a bitch. She's a real competition bitch. We've seen what she can do. She's won the ledger. She's won the Cesarewitch. Can she win a derby? She's got every chance in, and she's a beautiful price as well. Sad to see Sober Glory run out, but that music glide away. I had put him down last week as a one to watch because he absolutely flew, and I was delighted to see him do that again tonight. Um, so you can just see him. He'd be a dog. I don't know if he's going to get through to the semis, it's gotten now down to the really tough business end. But tonight was brilliant because we're all down to the one night. And you had eight tremendous heats and we got off to an absolute flyer. I love Bob Dream. Yeah, she's, got, she's pretty bomb-proof. She's very hard to keep out of the frame. You don't know, like, wherever she is on the corner, you know she's going to come to charge on the back straight and finish strongly. And yeah. as I said, she's going to be very hard to keep out of the frame. Music glide away. He's going to need to brush up his starting. That's always been his issue. Like, we're 13 races in. We've yet to see him take a ping. But Tommy Hewick, yeah, again, he's sort of one of the finds of the derby. And, you know, he's not a dog that was underexposed, but he certainly wasn't overexposed. Uh, moving on to the second heat of the night. And for me, this was the display of the evening. Undisputed took a flyer. As she had done in the previous two rounds, she looks likely to go around in front. And she did until... Up the second bend, the laddie da didn't get a flying start, but tracked so wonderfully well. The pace and, and speed and purpose, I suppose, he showed off the second bend to go to the front was pretty emphatic. It was, yeah. And look, I spoke to Wayne McCarthy afterwards. Oh, God love him. He was devastated. The fact that I actually led, he says, and I'm still not qualifying for the quarterfinals of Derby. It's heartbreaking for them. But look, she'll probably run Derby final She night. was a victim of circumstance. Once the yeah. laddie dag up her inside, she was always going to be vulnerable to those behind. It just so happens. Like Ben's Teddy and Clondra of Sydney, two of the most powerful gallops in the gallopers in the in the competition were remaining. And they got to her only in the last 20 strides. Yeah, yeah. It just, it look... This derby is all based on luck. We all know that. And she needed that tonight and she didn't get it. But look, 
we'll see her back derby final night, I'm sure. Daladi da, what a performance, what a powerhouse. Like, on, he's a, um, he's doesn't look much of a dog, he's a neat sort of a dog, you know, like, a, it's great my position over there because I, I get up close with all these animals and they're, they're wonderful, like, to see, you know, I love getting the headshots of them and seeing the guys with them and the, and the kennel hands and Daladi da, Shane was coming in off the track and I was taking a video and the dog was just looking up at him like, he's happy as Larry, he's hardly out of breath. After doing what he'd done, the fitness level is just unreal. This is only his ninth career start, yeah. it's pretty remarkable how good he is at this point. I think it's scary, to be honest with you, and I think that, it's scary in a good way, I think that he's got huge potential. Can I see him win a derby? No. I think he needs more experience to win a derby. There's still a little bit of greenness about that dog. He has got huge potential, huge engine, we all know that, but you can't be green in a derby. And the dogs that are left in it have more experience than him. And I just think he might be found out in the semi-final stage. I think he'll make it through to the semi-final stage, but I, I don't... he'll be second favourite in the morning, though. Yeah, you're probably yeah. right. I mean, the, the clock is there, Ian. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But he if needs to do that again. To start a competition. Oh, oh, if only. Oh. oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, behind them, Clonroo, <laughs> Sydney, and Ben's Teddy, two powerful, powerful gallopers, as we said. Th this is how they're going to qualify. By, by picking up the pieces later yeah. in the stages. You know, a little bit of luck, maybe one of them could get to a final, but they are going to need the gaps to arrive. Yeah, of course, but that's, look, that's what, that's what it's all about. And I think Ben's Teddy as well, like the, the performance he did uh, last week, 29-31, that was exceptional. But that was a, an even better performance to do what he did tonight to qualify. You know, you like to see them dig deep. That's the side I like to see of them. Any dog can win out front, that's easy. But you like to see them dig deep and do it from behind, that, that's key. And so to Heat 3, and here we saw Mr. Chalm returning to winning ways. Uh, the artist formerly known as Kildare, an English Derby runner-up, a dog who reached the Kirby in after, what, just five career starts. He won last year's Derby plate. Had a spell in England, just didn't really happen for him. Owners made the wise choice to send him back to Peter Cronin, and tonight they are. Well, that decision is bearing fruit because 17-01 to the third bend for Trinity Junior, at which point Mr. Cham swept round the outside and hit the front, went on to win by a couple of lengths in 29-21. I thought it was a big run by Mr. Cham. He's showing massive back straight pace. Couldn't quite match Trinity Junior to the corner, who I thought ran very well in defeat, and Garfini Blaze coming out of the clouds to grab third. But I think Mr. Cham deserves the headlines here. Oh, he does, of course. It's remarkable to see a dog do that, and especially after a stint in England. We've seen with what happened to Swords Rex, for instance, and I'm not saying it's coming from the traps and toast or back to different traps in Shelburne, but it certainly doesn't help. So when you see a dog that has been racing in England coming back to Shelburne Park and doing that, you have to say kudos, and you have to, you really have to give him uh, the, the pat on the back that he deserves, and a great train, training performance from Peter Cronin as well. Um, I dare I say I was a little bit disappointed with Trinity Junior because of a dog of his stature winning the Ball Sports Champion Stakes, doing a 17-01, you should be winning. But in saying that, it was 29-21. So it's hard to really knock the dog at the same time. But it's I'd, say just P I'd say Peter's delighted though. Oh, of two course of them, he is. Two of them side by yeah. side and they're actually side by side again next week, we know in hindsight. Yeah. But for them both to qualify as easily as they did... You know, Happy days. You know, he knows exactly what has to be done over the next two weeks. Yeah, of course. And look, it's an exciting position for him to be in. But he's been here already, so he knows all he's focused on is getting to the final. He couldn't care if he's first, second or third. Yeah. He just wants to get to that final six. That Garfini Blaze, I mentioned to you in the Talking Dogs, that dog was 20-1 to 1 to win the heat. Okay, fair enough, he wasn't going to win the heat. But he's a 750 dog in his early career. I think he only had six runs on his card. And he reached... Did he, was he in the Corn Cucullin? Yeah. He was yeah. favourite to win the Corn Cucullin. That's... So now he could be potentially be in the Derby final. And it's a bit like the bitch that was in it last year, the one that Cornica Cullen got to the final there. Crafty. 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 The he, 750 he's, is key. He's in going this to be derby. battling for those third spots yeah. with the likes of Clonroo Sydney, Ben's Teddy, dare I say it, Rahamofo, because she's yeah. not quite getting around the corner in front. And you know, there were one or two of those strong runners went out, but as you said, a few of them went through and Garfini Blaze certainly yeah. didn't catch the eye, came from out of the clouds. Um moving on to Heat Four. Not much to really talk about here, was there? Kula Vani Hoffa. Oh, sorry, that's right. He was beaten tonight. <laughs> um, this was a, a touch flat from Kula Vani Hoffa. Yes. It, it, it wasn't what we've seen from the last two weeks. Now, yes, we haven't seen the, the very, very sharpest that he showed last year, but we feel it's coming. We feel it's coming tonight. It was just a touch flat. Came away okay. You would have expected him to sweep to the front now. Bacchus Crystal, she's 14 weeks of the season now. She's just right. You know, you'd imagine for the next week or two, she'll continue to improve again. She's just 29.45 off the front. We know how classy she is. She's top, top class. Yeah. But it's still just that little bit disappointing from Kula Vani Hoffa. I would imagine there'll be a bit of work done this week and we could see a, 
a different Kulavani Hoffa next week. You could do, yeah. I mean, there's always a stage in the Derby. It's a six weeks. It's a long time. Trainers are not going to be hard on them week in and week out. There's always going to be that stage where they go, oh, do you know what, Ali's off this week and he could just qualify. But you can't take chances like that because the standard in this Derby is outrageously good. Um, was I disappointed with him? No, I wasn't because I know what the potential that Bocco's Crystal has. But it opened my eyes in terms of... It opened uh, up the Derby somewhat. Well, it did, of course. But the fact that... That was the first time I've seen him had to really dig deep in this year's derby. So now he's something to think about. Do you understand me? It's mm -hmm. not, he's 11 to 4 favourite. The, the next best in the betting at the st before tonight was 10 to 1. That's a massive gap, Ian. So you're now scratching your head going, is, should he be as short as he is based on that performance? Would because, well, Damien Lonigan's <laughs> the trader, don't ask me. But, um, I blame Damo. No I'm way. Poor Damo. Damo's brilliant. And, um, but look, I just think, I'm, I'm not disappointed with him. I just think when you're doing what he was doing week in, week out in the first two rounds, like the dogs get tired them, so they can't do that for six weeks. It's impossible. It was like Swords Rex and Toaster. Doing all their massive performances week in, week out, and then come the final, just it, it, it's impossible to expect too much of them. And I think there's, that's there, what's there, happening. People are expecting there, too much of them. There's a reason why only two dogs have gone unbeaten through the derby in the last 20 years. Well, yeah, but it, it's a hard thing to do. But I just think people are expecting too much of them. And I think he just deserves a little bit more respect. I'm not disappointed with his performance tonight by any means. Um, and I, do I think he'll win the Derby? I don't know. I really don't. But I think he'll make the final. <laughs> I think if he's in the final, he wins it. Um, back in third was Seven Beach. He's yet to hit the lids. Yeah. There is a big run in him, but he's going to need to hit the lids quickly. He's in trap one again next week, we know in hindsight. That's not where he wants to be. They see them inside with a view that you get the middle. Yeah. He's in trap one. Um, it's going to happen to happen for him quickly or else he's going to find himself out. Yeah, of course. And that was only his ninth uh, career start tonight. So again, like what is he? He's a, a September 21, so he's not two till next month. Like So he's still a baby, really. If he does go out, he's puppy derby to, to be in. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a silver lining. We'll move on to uh, Heat 5. I uh, thought this was a very taking display. Um, there's an argument to suggest that the track was maybe just touch going back a touch you know next sort of from the sort of third fourth race in mm. um droopy's bro did absolutely everything right off the front um 2942 it was a most taking display and millridge levy run its heart out in second spot and rahamofo just couldn't quite get there she could never really get involved in fairness the winner was doing a hell of a run mm. um, but droopy's bro only having his 10th start and another puppy for mert lahi a dog with a, a very bright future yeah, it, it's interesting what you said about the track being back at that stage because I find that hard because the fact that that was a career best from him tonight and it wasn't the hottest heat on the card, let's be honest about it. Um, Raham Ofo, I thought she was a little bit flat. Um, I, you know, I just thought she was missing something. I'm glad she got through. She was kind of lucky to get through. That, that pace that she has kind of got her through but she was a little bit flat for me and um, I'll have to have a look at the replays again tomorrow but what a night for Mert Leahy in general like his kennel is on fire that was a huge performance Droopy's um, bro he's only 69 pound he's a neat little thing um, but yeah a really good performance 17 12 ain't bad either like to deter a turn you know so yeah it was it was a weird race I had uh, tipped up too I don't know what I was thinking and she was only 9 to 2 in the heat I was thinking last week because she won a 28 to 1 and it's it was difficult. such a good it's, performance it's difficult to back them up like that yeah of course I mean? it is um, Drippy's bro the, the manner in which he entered the back straight the way he catapulted off that second bend mm. was most taking uh, again Mert has taught an awful lot of this dog from the early stages but you can see he's learning on the job yeah. he's learning pretty quickly he is yeah that was his 10th 10th uh, race tonight that's four wins from 10 now and a career best so the future is looking bright yeah Donny O'Mahony with the second there we must mention Millers level like Donny is yeah. up and down the road every week with dogs and of course, isn't is it he... great to see him in yeah in Mill Street there it's great to see him with one in, in the quarterfinals of Derby and, and who knows a little bit of luck he could be in one of the semi-finals yeah he could do no it's great to see you want to see some of the, the smaller trains in there as well and that's important like well, he trains plenty uh, we move on to heat 6 29-27 from Scaglietti yeah that sort of blows out the track was going a little bit back at this yeah. stage 29-26 uh, 29-26 in the first two rounds 29-27 tonight I think it's safe to call him consistent yeah. uh, he beats Bally Marino, who was definitely on the wrong side of Scaglietti they were level into the corner he came out of it a length behind and Scaglietti when he's on the bunny forget about it he's so so strong he's just a very very talented greyhound 17-17 isn't electric to the third bend no. it's still good mm. but he comes home 
in 12-10, which is absolutely monstrous. Bally McMarino ran his heart out in second, and Undulation, again, running a huge race in third to qualify. She is so, so fast, but Scaglietti just doing everything right for Pat Gilfoyle and Cheryl Sutcliffe. I couldn't imagine they'd be any happier with this fellow. Yeah, I was standing beside Sandra, and I was watching, I was like, are you nervous? She's like, I am. And I was like, because I tipped him to win the champion stakes. I think it was trap two. He got turned over at the bend from... And I was like, it's all right now, it's a different trap, you'd be all right. And he just, the way he came out, so when he came out, I knew it was all over. Um, but there is a good point that he was, if Marino was the other side, I think we would have seen a different result. But they call him Bailey at home, Scaglietti, and they think the world of him. That's now 11 wins from 22 starts. That's an unreal record for him. Um, and a dog, I, I, when I was interviewed with RPG TV earlier on, I said to Rob Catterson, I said, I was uncertain on who to pick for the Derby. Ian asked me on Monday, and I had Bob Slay dream, I'm going to stick with horses, but I'm putting him in. Yeah. I fell in love with him months ago, but after tonight's performance, I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Bally McRaino, yeah, a brilliant race. And Undulation, it's, she's quite different to Undisputed, really, because she stays and the other one, it doesn't really. So, But look, the, the litter is unreal, Ian. That's the, the amount of races they have to win in already, and they're still quite young. So, look, the, the, the future is bright in, in for all these bitches. And I know I go on about bitches in the derby, but, I mean, come on, like, the standard is exceptional. It's only getting better. Yeah, there's a very, very fast crop about, no question about it. On to Heat 7. Um, this was a contest where early speed was was a vital importance well met has plenty of it he just got the corner from the other Kobe he was my selection of the contest the other Kobe came charging at him down the back straight and meanwhile um, Clona Duke was there just there was a point around the opening two bends where Clona Duke showed unbelievable acceleration and then just early in the back straight he's forced to check sides and it costs him about a length and a half two lengths momentum yeah. and all of a sudden he's in trouble because the other Kobe's gone up his inside Dramana Dano I, I didn't see that run coming, I, I must say. He mm. was a huge price tonight. For him to qualify in third ahead of Clona Duke was just monstrous. But well met is just running so, so well for the Jones family. 17.23, he has gone faster to the third, Ben. But just given his early speed, he's one that a lot of the, the real sharp ones will want to avoid. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I was up at Brian Jones um, a good while ago and we were talking about dogs, as you do. And I said, have you acted for the Durban? He says, I only have the one. Well, that's all you need because yeah. he's running absolutely fantastic. He was 9-2 to two to win that heat tonight. And my comments I have down, fast away, always led. Clona Duke, there's times where I'm watching this dog at the first bend. I have to do that. He Shot some bravery. He did. And you don't know whether it's his cleverness that he's able to avoid the trouble and he shoots in. Or you're thinking, oh God almighty, he's going to get absolutely creamed out of it. So you do, you're watching it. But you, and That's he, the official term, is yeah, it? Yeah, sorry, I probably should have put that better. But um, yeah, look, he ran brilliant uh, to a point, but he just, he didn't have enough luck. And you'd like to think he would have had the classiness to at least qualify, but he just didn't get luck early doors when he got came out of traps, went back a bit, couldn't get a run in between them, shot through, and that, that cost him the race. He's had there. a very busy campaign, hasn't he? He has, you know, yeah. Between select stakes, English Derby, Irish Derby, and a curvy challenge in the middle. Yeah. You know, it, it's been a busy, busy year for him. It has, but I mean, you can't, like, he'll come back Derby final and now, and or, I mean, the Laurels is coming up, but you've got the ledger. There's so much for him to take on. He can have a nice little break now. You know, I think we're definitely going to see more from the dog, but um, I was disappointed to see Rye Hope Beach because of the way he ran in the first round, Dean, you were really expecting him to progress really far in this derby. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed with him. But um, the other, Kobe, as well. I think Did I draw him trap one tonight, I think? Yeah. yeah and they, they really want to trap one, so I'm delighted for that. He deserves a nice draw to see now, so hopefully he'll get through. But look, Jennifer O'Donnell, she's the fact the born warrior went out early doors. It's great to see her still in there, so yeah. fingers crossed she goes With his back. brother, the other Kobe. Yeah. Uh, and on to the last of the eight heats, and... Um, I must say, I, I was somewhat shocked the Clumbrine tree he was picked up considering how yeah. you know, how he got to the front as early as he did. But Drewby's nice one is immensely strong. She does run off that last bend, but once she straightened up, she kicked on again. And a finalist last year for Myrtle Ahi, as you said, he's had a great, great, great um, night. Um, Drewby's nice one is there in a quarterfinals of a derby yet again for John Coleman. Um, she is an absolute monster of a lady. Like she, <laughs> she just really is. She's never beaten. She's so, so strong. We saw her last year. She danced every dance, as Damo would always say. Yeah. She was in all the various major competitions, apart from the Derby final. And here she is winning again against Clambrine Treaty. It was basically the two of them, but 365 came from out of the clouds to qualify, knocking out Badger, Romeo Magico, oh, who, yeah. who went out. You know, he's shown the signs of a 
bit of age, I think. He's now four years of age, but it's a wonderful for 365 to be there for Scott and Kira. Yeah, of course it is. And again, um, uh, another bitch in the derby that had run so well over six bounds. So again, the 750 form is really playing into this derby. Delighted to see them through. Uh, but I, I agree with you about Clonbrine Treaty. When he was in front, I thought that was it. When I seen him lead, I was like, he justified his 8 to 11 odds. I mean, he was very short. Um, I didn't expect that from him. But I think I had said to you on Monday that there's times with that dog, I don't know what to make of him. Um, and I think that I backed that up then with that performance tonight. He didn't run bad or anything. He just had Droopy's nice one as a, as a brilliant bitch. I think it's the first time I've seen him in back run. You know, that's, yeah. what that's what surprised me is the fact that he got to the front. You know, that's normally the issue with him. But tonight he got to the front. You'd have expected him to win. But yeah. I don't take anything away from the winner. She is just... She's just wonderful. Yeah, she's special. She's versatile. She's a fantastic servant to have in the kennels for Mert Leahy and, and uh, John Coleman. So more luck to them. Like, you know, that's it's it's tremendous. Another one in the ladies' camp for you, huh? Yeah, another one. I'm telling you. It's all about the females. And 365. And 365. <laughs> Jesus, there's loads of them left. They got very confused in racing post television. Is there a possibility to have an all-bitch final? They were looking at the result. 365. No, it was... Five, six. I know. I've done like, the same over in the kennels. Five, yeah. yeah, the name anyway, of the Anyway, that's it. Eight heats yeah. down. So you're nailing your colours to Bobsleigh Dream and Scaglietti? Bobsleigh Dream with me each way. Um, and for the win, I'll go Scaglietti. Yeah, but you know what? The exciting thing about this derby is it's actually just tonight has it blown it wide open. Yeah, I it tend really to agree has. With you. It sort of came to life tonight. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, it's been brilliant the last two weeks, but yeah. tonight it shows that. You know, we see the likes of Clona Duke and, and Romeo Magico and a couple of the other big names, Sober Glory, going out. You can't make any mistakes because if you do, you'll be punished. You're gone, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Are you still sticking with Deladi Da for the 125,000 win? I will. I have Kulavani Hoffa backed as well. So oh, yeah. I'm not in a bad shape. He's not, not in a bad, bad way. <laughs> That's it from late in the evening here at Shelburne Park. My thanks to Sarah Kinsel. Who knows, the child might be back next week. I doubt he'll bring the child. But if he's here, he's here. If he's not, it could be yourself again. Anyway, that's it from Shelburne Park this Saturday night. 24 dogs remaining in the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby. And it all continues next Saturday night. If you can get here, I strongly recommend it. It'll be a bit special.